reading for this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we also have obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of, the tr of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the, see with the, promise, with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This is a word from the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For this I pray. Amen. All right, so a show of hands. Who has packed up Christmas? Ooh, over half. I'm not there yet. So the deck for, for a lot of you, the decorations are put away, the ornaments are boxed up, and the tree, everything put safely into storage for another year. But I think we all feel a letdown after Christmas. After all, there is this build up to the holiday, waiting expectantly for Christmas through those four long weeks of Advent as we wait and prepare for Christ. And then it's over, and we are on to the next thing, celebrating the arrival of a new year and the hope and the promise that it brings to our everyday lives. And I think this year, more than any other, we are truly looking forward to a new year. But you know what? Even the church calendar gets a little confused, a little confuzzled, especially this time of year. This year, I actually had an interesting choice. I could have, this could have been Epiphany Sunday, or as I'm choosing to do it, next Sunday. I, so I had this choice to move forward or hold on to one more Sunday of Christmas. So I, with this fresh year, I know we're all eager for the light. We want Epiphany. We want to celebrate the rising star to come, and for the Magi, to come and pay homage. But I don't think we're quite there yet. I mean, the birth of Christ, we have to remember, is merely a starting point. And we marvel and need to celebrate His birth and His coming into our world. So pa Paul is reminding us in, in our scripture for today that we need to truly pause and ponder and meditate on this event. But more, even more than that, we need to give praise to God 
for sending Christ into not only our world, but into our hearts. Paul writes this, right at the beginning of the letter to Ephesians. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. This is where our hearts really need to be today. I mean, think about that for a moment. This is really a praise God moment. Not just for Paul, but it should be a praise God moment for each and every one of us. Because what it does is it reminds us that God still works in the world, that God still moves in the world, and that if we watch and wait and open our hearts expectantly, we can see God at work. Christ is foundational for God. Christ was richly blessed and sent into this world as the ultimate reminder of God's love. And so there is great joy in Paul's words because he realizes just how much God did for us, for all of us, in sending Christ into the world. Our salvation comes through belonging to Christ, our belief in Christ, and our faith and trust in the Lord our God. Paul reminds us that through our faith in Christ, we are adopted into God's family. I hope you can see that that truly is a theme for today. We're adopted into this family. And I think we really need this reminder of just how important this adoption truly is. Because it's an adoption for us as a people of faith. I mean, it, this idea behind it is not just a superficial one. One we just kind of say, ah, if we're family because we belong to church. No, it's not that superficial. It has a deeper meaning, a deeper resonance, especially to the world that Paul wrote this, this letter. Adoption in the ancient world allowed for heirs. It increased social standing. It, it meant something to be adopted in the ancient world. So this same idea is one we need to embrace. We are adopted into the family of God through our accepting Christ as our Lord and our Savior. By recognizing Christ as Messiah and as the Son of God, we became part of that same inheritance. Our standing is raised because God elevates us to that same level. I mean, think about what we gain by believing. Paul reminds us that we have redemption from sin, that we have forgiveness of our trespasses, that there is grace, abundant grace, overflowing grace and the blessings upon blessings. We all know what I'm talking about. This grace, this redemption, this mercy, it is lavished upon us because God does not hold back in blessing his family. It also serves as a reminder about what is possible in God. <coughs> And what it, it's not what we can achieve through our own efforts. I mean, that grace 
is given freely. It's bestowed upon us. That salvation we get comes from God and no place else. It happens through God and because of God. I mean, do you realize just how amazing that is? This is God's love for us. So Paul, Paul writes, tells us this. God chose us, destined us, lavished this grace upon us. And we cannot limit it because we cannot limit God. It's something that we need to hold on to. It's easy for us to become discouraged, to get worn down and beaten down by the every, just everyday living. So we forget about God far too easily. And we put aside the redemption that is freely given. I mean, we don't always understand it. We don't always, aren't always able to wrap our minds around it. But eventually, we come to recognize just what we have as being part of this family. That we, too, share in the mystery that is God. Paul writes this. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. I think what we really need to remember is that our faith is not a mystery for us to figure out. It's not a puzzle to solve. It's not a riddle to explain. The mystery of God is what lays unseen, something to be revealed by God in God's own time. We cannot force it. And when we try to, to figure it out, we miss the point. I mean, after all, we are curious creatures. We want to know. We want to understand, to comprehend. We like solving mysteries and figuring out those puzzles and those riddles. But that's not what we should be doing with God. Instead, we need to remember just who God is. Yes, God is this mysterious figure in our lives. But when you break God down, when you get down to the, the simplest point, God is not a mystery. God is love. We need to remember this, that through our belief, we find grace and our redemption. Rather than try to go through the motions of proving God or rationalizing God or the world, instead we need to trust and we need to believe. And that, my friends, that is the hard part for us. Because we want to be self-reliant. We want to do things for ourselves, figure things out for ourselves. It's part of our humanity. God made us to be curious creatures. And we don't always want to admit that in our self-reliance, that in our everyday lives, we need God. Or... We need Christ, or that we need grace, mercy, redemption. I mean, after all, we're good church-going folk, aren't we? But we still crave God. We come here each week seeking God, seeking to connect with the holy to find Christ, to reaffirm our faith as we go out into the world for another week. We want more. 
and we need more. And this is a place where we can connect and discover God. And But that's what we find here. Through this inheritance, we find our Christian identity. We have discovered that, yes, we belong to God. That through Christ, we inherit something amazing. That love is inherent in all of us. It is here in our faith. And because of our faith, because of our connections, we love one another as family because of God. I mean, think about it. That's why we gather. Together, we come together to share God's love, to be with each other. Because of this love, we understand what the verse means, that God so loved the world that he sent Christ into it. It's because of all of us. It's because of the connections that we have made with each other and with God and with Christ. It is, all, it is part of us. It becomes in our, it sinks into our bones. I mean, we're called to be faithful. Paul reminds us of this, that we have heard the word of truth made manifest in Jesus Christ. There is where we find our hope and our trust in God. It is where we find our faith. Paul calls it the gospel of salvation, that God sent Christ into our world to save us all. If only we repent of our sin and believe in the mystery of God. God claims us, each and every one of us, and God redeems us, each of us, through Christ and through the mark of the Holy Spirit. We've come into our identity as Christians. We come into the family, and no one can take that from you. It is our inheritance. It is who we are as a people of faith. It is made available through Christ if we confess and if we believe. Paul writes, In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. So praise God. Praise God for adopting us. Praise God for claiming us. And praise God for marking us. Remember who you are. You carry the mark of the Holy Spirit upon you. You belong to God through Christ. Share your praise, share your love, and share your adoption with everyone you meet. Amen.